Have you ever wanted to have transparent windows inside your window manager? Have you ever wanted to have maybe a blurred background behind your windows? Something like some Mac OS effect. I think it looks pretty cool. Have you ever wanted to have shadows behind your windows? Or rounded borders? In this video I'm going to teach you how to do all of that and more using this program called PCOM. So PCOM is a compositor that will basically allow you to achieve all these effects with your windows, your status bar, even your application launcher, everything like that. Because if you want maybe some effects for your terminal, like you can get it transparent just using most terminal emulators. There's probably an option in the settings to change the transparency, but PCOM will allow you to make these changes in any window doesn't matter if it's a terminal, a web browser, or anything else. And to be honest, these changes are basically just aesthetic. Like, I like the way this looks of this nice frosted glass background behind my windows. But it's totally optional, it just makes your computer look nicer. But if you're like me and probably spend 8 or more hours every day on a computer, it's nice to have something that looks good. So, that's what I'm going to teach you how to do in this video. Now the hardest thing about PCOM is actually choosing which PCOM to install. So in the past there have just been tons of different forks of this PCOM right here. So this is the main repository right here. And you might have heard of Compton before. So Compton was a compositor that was used before, but it basically got outdated and it wasn't really getting updates anymore. It wasn't being maintained. So somebody forked Compton and basically changed the name to PCOM right here. But a problem with this original PCOM repository right here by YShui, one of the problems was that a lot of features that people really wanted were just not coming fast enough. Uh, the development was very slow for a while, at least on the main branch, and it was just taking a long time to develop all these different features that people wanted. Features like a better window blur, or maybe rounded corners. And for a long time, this original YShui repository right here was just not receiving a lot of updates. So in the past, maybe a year or two ago, there were just a million and one different forks of this. A couple of the popular ones were this one. I don't want to pronounce this name, but uh, this was a popular fork of it that, as you can see, it had uh, the dual Kawase blur and rounded corners, like I said. And this is another one, which basically has similar features, maybe a couple more. But the problem with all these different forks was some of the forks had the features that you wanted, some of them were missing some features, some of them weren't up to date, some of them just aren't being maintained. As you can see the last update on this was 14 months ago. So the whole situation with just a million forks was just a huge mess. There are many more than these two, these are just a couple of the most popular ones. But I'm here to clear everything up. And I think that the current version that you should use right now is the original YShui, but just use the development branch right here. So these days the development branch has every feature and more. So it has the new window blurring and it has the rounded corners and a whole bunch of other stuff. For me personally, I've never found anything missing or anything that I actually needed from this. This has everything I need and more. But you don't want to install the main branch, you want to install the development branch right here. So this is going to be the next branch right here. And you might get a little bit scared because in the readme it says this is a development branch, bugs are to be expected. But to be honest, I've never had a problem with this, no bugs, not even once. So I would really recommend you use this instead of one of the millions of forks that you don't really need. So at least if you're using Arch Linux, it is going to be in the AUR, it's going to be called dash s PyCom git right here. Is it PCOM or PyCom? I was never really sure about that. But let's install PCOM git right here. I've already done so. But yeah, this is going to get the next development branch that it showed over here. If you're not on Arch Linux, then you may just have to build it yourself. So if you're on Debian, then you would install these dependencies right here with your package manager. Fedora, you would do these. And you would just basically run these commands in order to build it. I'll leave a link to this in the description if you want to build it yourself from source. Maybe you're not an Arch, you don't have the AUR. And anyway, once you have it installed, you're going to find a sample configuration file. Uh, it's in slash etsy slash xdg, and it's going to be pcom.conf, or maybe pcom.conf example right here. So let me just open this up right here. 
and it's going to be something like this. It's going to be a configuration file with a bunch of sample configuration options and a whole bunch of documentation, basically explaining what every single property here does. I would recommend copying this and using this as the base of your configuration file and then changing things as you see fit. So you would just copy all this and where you want to copy it, you want to create a new folder in your .config directory. So it's going to be .config slash pcom right here. I've already created that, but let me cd into here. And you're just going to have a file called pcom.conf here. Open that up. And I've removed all of the comments basically telling you what every property does. But I'll just go over what all these do, which ones you need to pay attention to which ones are the important ones basically. So let me just close this out. And let's assume that you have a PCOM configuration file right here. So first thing you'll want to do is switch the backend to GLX. So there's a few different backends for PCOM. You're going to want to use GLX uh, or it's basically using OpenGL as the backend. Initially it uses something like XRender, but in order to get all the features, you're going to want to use this GLX backend right here. This will allow you to get the new blur and other features like that. And then these are just a couple of uh, additional options just for performance. So you can leave these in if you already have them from your original configuration file. And so let's start off with probably the most common thing that you want to do with PCOM, and that's change the opacity of different windows. So you probably want to have some kind of transparency, maybe on your terminals, maybe on some other application. And for now, let me uh, disable the blur so you can just see the opacity right here. So now we just have a nice transparency right here. We can see the desktop background because you probably don't get to see enough of your desktop background. Now you can see a little bit more of it. But we have a few options right here. We have the active opacity and inactive opacity. So this is if you want to change the opacity of every single active window uh, just all at once. So this is going to be your web browser, your terminal, your word processor. This is going to be everything. If I change this to 0 0.5, everything is going to be 50% transparency. I open up a web browser. It is now ghostly. But this is probably not what you want. You probably don't want to have your web browser affected as well. Most people probably just want to have one or two programs transparent, not all of them. So a better method of doing this besides this yeah, so a better option would just be to use this opacity rule right here. So this is just going to be an array with a whole bunch of values inside it. And this is basically assigning the opacity for each of these different uh, programs and which state that they're in. So for example, this one is saying if I have alacrity and it is focused, I want it to be 90% opacity. But if I have alacrity and it's not focused, then I only want it to be 70% transparent. So that's what this little focus flag over here is doing. And you can add as many of these as you want, actually. So you can put in all of these different programs. You can put Spotify in here or something. So you can either write the class in here. And if you want to find the class of a, of a window, you can run xprop right here, click on the window, and then somewhere in here is going to tell you the class of this. So the class right here is alacrity. So I put alacrity in here. I believe you can also do name. So let me just see if this works. Change this to name. So if the name is alacrity, then it'll give this a 90% opacity. Name might be easier than finding the class in your case. Personally, I just use class underscore G. So for me personally, I only really want to have my terminals transparent. I don't really care about anything else, but you can't add as many as you want here. And next, let's go over blurring the background. So you'll want to set blur background to true. And then down here, you're going to want to have the blur method right here. So I'm using dual kawase. And you might be wondering what this is. This is basically just a performant blurring method. So there's different blurring methods. If you want to look in the documentation, you can see all the different methods. But basically, everybody I know recommends this specific one because it's going to be more performant, not going to be laggy at all. So this is the one that you want to use in order to blur your windows. And then next up, we're going to have blur strength. So this is how blurred that you want the background. Two is going to be just a bit blurred. 10 is going to be very blurred. If you want some frosted glass kind of something like this. I like to have it in between maybe something like six or eight is nice for me. So you can still see a little bit of the background right here. 
However, if you do use this dual Kawase blur method, then you will want to run an additional option whenever you run PCOM right here. Let me kill the current PCOM right here. And let's start up PCOM. And you're going to want to run dash dash experimental backends right here. And then and only then will this dual Kawase work. So it'll only work if you have this set to GLX. It won't work properly if you don't have this, so do keep that in mind. And whenever you start it, you do need to pass in this flag right here. And finally, when I start this, let me just also pass in the dash B option right here. This is saying start it in the background. When I hit enter, that will work properly. And finally, you can also exclude a certain window type. So I'm excluding the dock right here. So for instance, I don't want this polybar instance up here to have a background that's blurred. If you do, you can remove this. But if you want to have some things blurred and some things not, this is how you're going to do it. Let me save this. But let me go over one more thing, and that's maybe you want to have a transparent background or a blurred background. But maybe you don't want to have the entire thing transparent. So maybe I want to make this like 50% opacity, the status bar up here. But if I make it 50% opacity, it's going to be very hard to read the text right here. So what you can do in a lot of programs, let me open up my polybar configuration right here. And a lot of applications will allow you to pass in an additional hex value to one of these hexadecimal colors. So if I wanted to have a completely transparent background right here, I would type 00 at the end here. Save that. Let me restart my polybar here. And as you can see now, it is completely transparent and the background is blurred. Because this 00 right here is going to be completely transparent, FF is going to be completely opaque. And if you want something in between, like maybe 50%, it's going to be like 80, something like that. If you want to percent a hexadecimal converter, you can search for that online. Let me just show you how this looks at 50%. Now there's still a little bit of color here, but you can do that if you want to have maybe a transparent background on your poly bar, maybe your Rofi, something like that, without making the entire bar transparent, because I wouldn't be able to read any of the text in that case. Next up, let's talk about fading. So this is just fading between different desktops. So if I go from here to here, you can see a little bit of a fade effect. And you can change the duration with this fade delta right here. So if you make it longer, then it's going to give you a very gradual fading effect if you want it to be a little bit slower. And the lower the number, the faster it's going to be. I like to have it at four. And it'll also fade in a new window or fade out a closed window and you can toggle that on and off with this option right here. And down here, there's just a few more options that probably aren't completely necessary. I've just left these defaults in from the initial configuration file. But if you want a complete explanation on what every single one of these options does, you can just see the explanation in the original configuration file. I'm not gonna go over all of these, that would be a very long video. But finally, let's go over one more thing, and that's gonna be the shadow. You can't really see it that easily on my current setup, but if you want to have a shadow, let me just change this to true. And you might have been able to see that there's now a shadow behind this. If you want to give a little bit of depth to your windows, you can add this. It's probably a little bit hard to see, so let me turn it green so you can actually see it. So now you can see there's a very large shadow right here. And you can change these around with the shadow radius if you want your shadow to be bigger or smaller. You can change the offset, you can change the opacity. I personally don't have this, but it can be a nice little touch if you want something like some shadow. I think Windows has a shadow on all their windows, so if you miss that for whatever reason, you can do this. You can also exclude some specific things. Maybe you want some program to not actually have a shadow, and you can do that here. So if for some reason you don't want VLC or Firefox or any of these things to have a shadow, you can put that in here. And last but not least, let's talk about corner radius. So if you want to have a little rounded corner on all of your windows, uh, some people don't like the sharp edges, so you could add that if you want. You can use this corner radius value right here. Now, it's specifically not going to work in BSPWM just because uh, it's not compatible with BSPWM, but some window managers it's compatible with, some of them is not. For BSPWM, at least, I know there's a different way of doing rounded edges if you want that. You're gonna to have to change something inside BSPWM. But if you're using some kind of window manager, I'm not sure, maybe i3 works with this. 
I'm not super sure, but you can try it out and see if it works. For me, uh, let me crank this up a bit. You can see that it does round the corners, but there's still like a, a bit of space that you can see. It's not actually transparent, so it doesn't really work. But you can try it out, maybe it'll work on your setup. And if it does, then this is a nice little way to get rounded corners. That can be a nice effect if you want that. But it doesn't personally work for me, so I'm gonna leave that out. And that's basically it. That's all there is to configuring PCOM right here. So once you have a basic configuration that you're happy with, I'm happy with this, you can start it like I showed you before with PCOM dash dash experimental backends. This is if you're using the GLX backend and the dual Kawase blur method. I believe this is also needed if you want to use the rounded corners. And then the dash B option in order to run it in the background. So what you would do is you would copy this right here and paste it into your startup script for your window manager. So that would be your i3 configuration file. That would be your BSBW MRC, whatever you're using. You would add this line to the startup script and it will automatically start up every time you start up your computer. So now you can have some nice looking windows with a nice blurred background effect. So now you can impress all of your friends and all of the people on Reddit with your cool new desktop configuration.